Hello, hello, and welcome to Self Care is Sexy. My name is Chris, and I'll be your host. We're a podcast that's here to generate and share self care ideas with each other. Last episode, we learned all about pivoting, how we can change our thinking and use this skill to help connect with ourselves, show up more authentically, and create lasting behavior change in any area of our lives, including self care. I want to give you a quick preview of what to expect from today's show. Today, I'm going to be talking about self-betrayal, and this is something that really gets in the way of self-care, and it can actually lead to self-harm. So it's very important that we talk about it so that we can try and identify it, learn from it, and of course, I've got some specific self-care ideas on how to heal from a betrayal that you may have inflicted on yourself. We'll get to all that and more after a quick break. All right, friends, buckle up because today we're diving deep into the topic of self-betrayal. And as with all my episodes that we're talking about big feelings, please make sure you're in the right headspace to be listening to this kind of content today. If you do nothing else for self-care, please turn this podcast off if you're not into digging through your own self-betrayal. And if you're really craving some fun, positive content, I've got tons of lighthearted episodes for you to go check out. You can find all the past episodes on our website, www.selfcareissexy.com. Or if you subscribe on Apple Podcast, you can always find those older episodes there as well. But it's super important that you don't do any further harm to yourself with content that you're just not emotionally ready for. And that does not mean that there's something wrong with you. And it does not mean that there's something that you need to fix. We don't want to add to any self-betrayal with more acts of self-betrayal. And please, please heed this warning. I don't know a lot of podcasts where the hosts literally suggest that you turn it off, but I do know a lot of podcasts where people don't warn you of the intent or the content before you get into it. So, you know, if you're not ready for this today, that's fine. Turn it off. Find something positive. Start your self-care journey by taking action right now. All right, so, but if you are ready to hear about self-betrayal and dig into it, and that sounds like something you're working on, let's get started. We're going to first start by breaking it down really quick, what self-betrayal is, um, because I do feel like it's important that we should have a baseline understanding about what we're talking about, because, you know, we all don't have the same definitions for things and words, so for the purposes of today's show, when I use the term self-betrayal, What I mean is the intentional or sometimes unintentional act of not accepting ourselves for who we are than the subsequent misshaping of our values to fit a given situation. Now, I know that's a loaded definition. I'm going to break it down to the Chris notes. Self-betrayal is when you do an action, whether you're aware of it or not, that doesn't align with what you really, really believe, what is really true for you. And it's actually the far enemy of self-care. If you're into Brene Brown, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't found her yet, go check her out. She has this concept. It's not hers, but she expands on it in an emotional maturity way about the far and near enemies. It's, It's certainly not a Western concept. And I could literally do an entire podcast on the near and far enemies of different emotions, but just know that self-betrayal is a very obvious enemy to self-care. And at its core, betrayal is lying. And self-betrayal is lying to yourself. It's about putting aside how you really feel in order to preserve a relationship or to make another person comfortable or to smooth out a situation you're in. That is what betrayal is. Now, here's the thing, though. Self-betrayal can be extremely traumatizing, but it's not always obvious that you're doing it. Like, no one on purpose lies to themselves, 
but it does happen all the time. And it can be subtle in like the forms of procrastination or holding yourself back. But at its core, self-betrayal is going against yourself, even if you don't realize that you're doing it. But it is doing serious damage and it's preventing you from enjoying any kind of self-care. Now, it can be a one-and-done type event where you make yourself do something you don't want to do, something that you know is not right for you, but you give in and you do it anyway. That is an act of self-betrayal. It might not seem all that hard to, you know, get over, but if you're doing this on a consistent basis, it can really, really be difficult to overcome that pattern, and it can be traumatizing. So we're going to learn today what that pattern is. And while it can be a one-time action that you just do, it just happens rarely, it can also be a behavior that is so ingrained that you're not even aware that you're doing it. I've got some examples of what self-betrayal looks like so that you can get a better idea of what we're talking about. All right, so here we go. My 10 examples of self-betrayal that you might not know you're doing. Number one, laughing and going along with others. It seems like a really benign habit or behavior. You're laughing, you're joking, you're just going along with whatever's being said. But here's the deal. When we're responding and we're reacting to things in our environment, we're telling other people, maybe not through words, because believe me, folks, we communicate with a lot more than the words we use, but you are communicating that you're going along with or you agree with what's being said around you. Just like you vote with the dollars you spend, You self-betray with your complacency. If you're just going along with what people are saying around you, somebody's making fun of somebody else, somebody says, oh, I don't like that, or GMOs are bad, and you're like, yeah, they're bad, and you start laughing along at all those idiots out there eating GMOs and not even knowing it, right? You are telling everyone around you that you're willing to jump on in just to go along, and that's complacency. This most likely comes up if you're a person that is really bad at conflict or you don't like conflict. So you'd rather just shrink yourself to make others comfortable. God fucking forbid other people don't like you. That is one of your biggest fears. If you're laughing and going along with whatever people say, even if you don't agree with them, it means you're in a fear state that you're afraid people aren't going to like you. Because if you were really in your power state and you were like, hey, who fucking cares about GMOs, man? I did drugs. I put a lot of shit in my body. And if it's GMOs that take me out, so fucking be it. You have to be able to, in the point of socialization, say how you feel. Because you're literally telling people who you are through that act. Number two, another example of self-betrayal you might not know you're doing is when you describe yourself, you say, I love hard. You ever hear that when you're getting to know someone? They, they, you know, they tell you how they're, they're, they love really hard. They really fall in love when they fall in love. And you might think it's cute, but it's not. Knock it off. What it's really communicating is that you're willing to do whatever it takes to be love, including disregarding yourself. Empathy, love, caring, compassion, those are great qualities. When they become toxic is when you're willing to express at the expense of yourself. Number three, another example is that you're bad at boundaries. In the beginning of a relationship, romantic or otherwise, you cheat your bedtime because you don't want the other person to lose interest. So you're willing to stay on the phone for hours and hours to get them to know you and feel comfortable and trust you. That means you're willing to trample your boundary to begin something fun and exciting with somebody else. And while, again, it seems benign, it seems like no big deal, it seems like I'm falling in love, you are bad at boundaries and you are betraying yourself. And I want you to think about every relationship that has ended for you in a tragic and horrible way. Every time you look at the beginning of that relationship, you're going to find examples over and over again of you allowing that other person to trample your boundaries or you not stating your boundaries or you inviting the boundary trampling. That is always going to appear at the beginning of a toxic relationship. 
Healthy people get into relationships by saying, hey, I'm a, I'm a morning person. I go to bed by nine o'clock. It's a solid for me. Eight hours of sleep is what I need in order for this to work. And the other person, if they respond, yeah, great, sounds fantastic, you know you're in the right place. If you're afraid that they're going to respond in a way that's like, ooh, I'm a night owl, I like to party, and that frightens you, you don't want to lose that person, and you're willing to change your foundation, you're, you're going the wrong way, man. That's a red fucking flag. Number four, an example of self-betrayal that you might not be aware of is that you're putting other people's needs before your own. Now, it's just as bad to devalue yourself as it is to overvalue yourself or let your ego take charge. Those two things, while very opposite, are the same disease. They're the same problem. When you think so poorly of yourself that you put everyone else in front of you, it's as bad as a narcissist whose ego is so out of control they put themselves before everyone else. The difference between whether it's good or whether it's bad is the balance in the middle. So while you think you're being a really good person by putting your needs on the back burner while you help attend to everyone else around you, your partner, your kids, your job, your friend, and you're last on the list, you think that you're being a good person, doing a good thing, and look at all these people I'm helping. But what you're really doing is you're betraying yourself and you're setting yourself up for resentment. Number five, you take responsibility for other people's feelings. Now, this is one of the most powerful concepts that if you can master this key concept, if you can start to learn how to take control of this key concept, self-care will become automatic, it will become routine, and it will become easy. And you will start to find that all the other problems in your life are going to resolve as a result. So number five, taking responsibility for other people's feelings. It's, I don't want to make that person mad. If I do this, that person's going to be hurt and I can't disappoint them. Ooh, I better not say that. I don't want to set her off. Or last time I called, I, he got pissed off and said he was going to hurt himself. These are all examples of you taking responsibility for other people's feelings. You do not have the control to make other people feel their feelings. You can do things and have actions and say things that people then have a feeling as a result of. But I promise you this, try this. If ever you think you have control over someone else's feelings, go over to a friend's house who is going through a breakup, who's super upset and sad, and try to make them happy. And I mean like the day they broke up, right? You do not have that kind of control over other people. Yes, your behavior, your attitude, your words can affect other people's moods or feelings. But their change in mood and feeling is their choice and their control. You are not the one. You are in control of your feelings. And when you start being the one who's responsible for your spouse's happiness, your kids' depression, your boss's confidence, when you start being that, you have gone the wrong way. And you really need to learn how to flip that around. And I do have some examples on how you can get out of that pattern if it's something you're like, oh shit, I'm deep in the trenches of that. So make sure you subscribe to this podcast so you can catch up on that later. Number six, another subtle example of how you're betraying yourself is that you're compromising your own beliefs and values to make other people comfortable. So this kind of goes back to my GMO example before, but what this really means is that you're willing to put your own values and your own beliefs in the trash can based on what someone else is saying. So let's say you really got into the adult coloring books. Maybe you listen to a past episode and you're like, Chris, that was one of my favorite self-care things. Or maybe you're doing like my friend Jessica who does the little dot pictures, you know, with the little gems as a form of self-care. And a buddy comes over and says, oh my God, you're like 30 years old and you have a coloring book? That's so childish. 
if you find yourself inclined to then throw them away or get rid of them or put them in a drawer or poo-poo it like, oh, I don't really like that. It's just, you know, I heard it on a podcast. You are compromising your own values to make that other person feel comfortable, to validate what they believe. This all goes back to the inability to have confrontation. If you are so concerned about what other people think about you and you're so afraid of having an opposing viewpoint, then you are around the wrong people or you need to really work on building your own confidence, getting into your own center. And again, I have a ton of past episodes that can help walk you through doing exactly that. Number seven, a subtle way that you're betraying yourself is that you're ignoring red flags. You're excusing other people's bad behavior just because you want the situation to work out. You know, this looks like giving the other person the benefit of the doubt all the time. This looks like listening to someone's trauma story and and then allowing them to not fulfill their obligations or not take accountability because you are aware they went through trauma. Or literally, people do this all the time. They will use the trauma that they've been through. They will use difficulties that they're having. They will use diagnoses and things of that nature in order to not be held accountable. And the way that you know you're getting sucked into that is that your intuition keeps going off. You keep seeing little red flags about their behavior. Their actions and their words don't match up. They're willing to bulldoze your boundaries. They're willing to borrow the 20 bucks from you and act like it never happened. They're willing to do certain things that definitely compromise their integrity and they're not remorseful about it. Now, if you've got a project friend who's really working through some shit, maybe they're going through some things. Yes, compassion and understanding are the keys to a happy and peaceful existence in this world. But that does not mean that you ignore the red flags and the intuition gut checks that you have about people. Every time you do that, You are betraying yourself. You're stabbing yourself in the back just a little bit more each time. Number eight, you're morphing into what your partner or your spouse wants you to be. This could be your romantic partner. It could be your friend. It could be your parents. It could even be your job, by the way. And at first, the subtle version of this is it just looks like you're adaptable. Just looks like, you know, you probably use the phrase, I'm a chameleon. I fit in with everybody. Okay, what you're doing when you say that about yourself and when that's true about your personality is that you are literally morphing yourself into what other people want you to be. And I'm sorry, sweetheart, but that means that you're not authentically being yourself. How do I know this? I used to do it all the time. And what I can tell you now is that on the other side of that behavior and that habit, when I come up against somebody and I'm being authentically myself and they don't like it, It was difficult at first to come up against that, but now that I've done it over a long period of time and have practiced at it, it feels great to have someone challenge my personality or challenge who I am or say that like what I think is funny is dumb or the fact that I play Pokemon Go as a 44-year-old adult woman. Like, oh, that's so childish. That's that's lame. You're in your phone. What a geek. I can literally receive that feedback from someone and be like, yeah, so? It's not pretending that it doesn't bother me. It's not acting like I'm Teflon. It genuinely doesn't bother me when people judge those things about my personality or about who I am because I no longer care or need validation from outside. I have self-cared my way through that bullshit. And I promise you, if you're looking for relief, stop morphing yourself into what everybody wants you to be. Your parents want you to be a star athlete at a collegiate school on the East Coast. Is that what you want? You know, your partner wants you to go golfing with them every weekend. Do you really enjoy golf? These are the things that you're doing to yourself that are creating that feeling of, I don't want to be me anymore. It's creating the want to escape. And the opposite of that is just being yourself and not needing to escape and allowing the other people to get a little butt hurt if you don't respond the way they want. But that's their choice. You know what happens when I'm around somebody 
and they want to do something I don't want to do, good, great, go. Let them. Let them. You're not in control of everyone. And it turns out not everyone's going to like you. There are 7 billion fucking people on this planet. I'm sorry to tell you, sweetie, not all of them are going to be madly in love and think you're right all the time. So take a look at that when you find yourself morphing into what everyone wants you to be. That is self-betrayal. Number nine, saying sorry all the time. You know you're starting to betray yourself when you're apologizing for things that you know damn well are not your fault. All right? I want you to really think about this. Saying sorry, oh, I'm sorry, it can mean a lot of things. It can mean, can we just get past this? It can mean, that wasn't my best effort. It can mean, I didn't mean to do that. But when you use the phrase, the specific phrase, I'm sorry, it's the I'm piece that I'm trying to get you to see. The I'm. You're adding yourself as a descriptor to the guilt and the shame. And this is self-betrayal. Again, it doesn't feel like that. It feels really benign. It feels really innocent. But the truth is, these are genuine examples of how you are stabbing yourself in the back and creating an, a disease inside you, an uncomfortability inside you that you might not even be aware of. So when you find yourself saying, I'm sorry all the time, really pause and think about what is it you're really trying to say? Is it that you're trying to say, thank you for being patient with me. I'm always late. I'm getting better at that. Or, you know, I want to try again. Can we, can we start over? Can we start this conversation over? Can I try again at this? Because when you take the power out of, I'm sorry, you're not saying internally to yourself, I'm a piece of shit. I can't do anything right. I'm no good. I'm not good enough, et cetera, et cetera. You're stopping that tape and you're really thinking about what it is you're trying to communicate as a result of whatever perceived mistake you made. And number 10 on my ways of subtle self-betrayal is that you're doing what sounds good versus doing what's good for you. And this, my friends, is the absolute most popular form of self-betrayal. It's easier to do whatever sounds good versus doing what you know is good for you, like eating a bunch of cookies versus having an apple, or getting out of bed when the alarm goes off versus hitting snooze and rolling back over, um, or scrolling for hours to get a break versus going for a walk or taking a nap. So why is this a sign of self-betrayal? It seems so subtle. It seems like, well, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to make myself feel better. Right? You could even get into the mindset that, hey, this is self-care for me. The reason I know it's not self-care for you is because of the reasons you're doing it. If you're saying, I'm on my phone for hours scrolling through TikTok and Insta because I need a break. I need a break from all this stressful stuff going on in my life. Doing what sounds good in the moment sounds like self-care, but it is a betrayal And it's a razor thin edge. And and I promise you, you know the difference. I don't know the difference for you, but I sure the hell know the difference for me. I know because when I go to eat something that I didn't plan for because I'm all stressed out or I'm not feeling the greatest, I know that what I'm trying to do is get instant relief versus self-care, which is having taken the time to sit down and figure out, okay, what am I getting relief from? And how can I manage what's happening around me to not need relief from it? Is it a mindset shift? Is it a, is it a state interrupter like we talked about last episode? Is it something that I can control? Because I know you know this. When you do what's good for you, when you show up and you go to the gym, you always leave feeling better. When you fulfill an obligation you don't feel like doing, but it was the right thing to do, you walk away feeling better. When you do what feels good in the moment, there's usually regret afterwards. That's how you tell the difference. All right, I'm going to run through that list real quick one more time. My 10 examples of very subtle self-betrayal is number one, laughing and going along with others. Number two, describing yourself as someone that loves hard. Number three, being bad at boundaries. Number four, putting other people's needs before your own. Number five, taking responsibility for other people's feelings. 
Number six, compromising your own beliefs and values to make others comfortable. Number seven, ignoring the red flags. Number eight, morphing into who your partner or your kids or your friends or your parents want you to be. Number nine, saying I'm sorry all the time. And number 10, doing what sounds good versus doing what's good for you. Now, again, you might be thinking, eh, it's not all that bad. So what if I do these things? And and who cares if I laughed at some funny jokes that weren't really funny? What's the big deal? 